fulfillment, it doesn't matter if they can't sell. Yeah. Like that is the bottleneck for that's the one question we have. I don't care how great the offer is. It just doesn't, can you sell it? That's well, well, and that's what our new offer is going to help you guys do is build the foundation. And then if, once you've got that in place, then we can help you build, build the sales team or you can do it yourself because you'll have what you need, but either way you can win. That's the, uh, cool. We're live. I'm going to keep this window open. I'll watch for Facebook comments. Okay, cool. Cause yeah, I can't see anything except, uh, except you. Man. I'm used to my big widescreen monitor back in, in the States. So like I have my little laptop. I, I've got two laptops, but still. I'm the same. I'm used to having a few monitors, but we're live in the group with Peter from Menti. Now, if you don't know Peter, I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background and tell you why he's here and why this is the training we're doing in the vault. And it is because we went through the fundamentals, right? In the vault, we've, we've hammered down on messaging. You got that down. We hammered down on positioning. You get that down. We hammered down on the power offer, how to go out there, make an offer, and get people on the phone that are ready to buy. What we do in our business is make something infinitely scalable. You could sell all day long and you will never drown in fulfillment, right? The biggest hang up with experts, with professionals, with people that are great at fixing your relationship, uh, doing your taxes, coaching your marketing, they can, a lot of them are service providers. They're not salespeople. And the bottleneck, the hang up in the business, right, is that, and, and Peter's probably heard this even more than I have, where people legitimately, people that are wanting to grow business say, I hate, I hate, hate, hate the sales process. And you cannot, you will not grow your business to any appreciable size if you continue to hate the sales process. And Peter, what you've done, right, is you've built this foundational piece where you, you teach, correct me if I'm wrong, but you teach the expert how to sell, fall in love with the process, and lay the foundation to build a team so they don't have to do it anymore, right? Right. And it, well, and the thing is what most people uh, who are experts or, or, you know, provide transformation, it's like they're in it for the right reasons, right? They want to have a positive impact on the world. You know, they want to make business owners or, or, you know, individuals better in some way. They want to provide that transformation and they, um, they're good people. And so they get hung up on the, well, I don't want to push anybody into it. I don't want to be like Grant Cardone, making people feel bad to, you know, to buy. And, and I'm all about that. I totally agree. That's not the way to do it. And actually, it's not as successful as doing it the, the, a completely and totally authentic way. Um, but what happens is that a lot of us are successful, even if our sales, you know, are, are no good because we believe in our offer and we have so much certainty in our offer that like, you know, we can explain it and talk about it and like, you know, I listen to some of these sales calls with some of these experts and they just drone on for an hour. And then the person's like, here's my credit card because, and they've got no skill whatsoever. And that's great. And you could probably close 20% that way, maybe even 30 or 40% if your belief is high enough, but you are leaving money on the table without having a structured process in place to enroll the ones who weren't super warmed up and already like wanted to, you know, like see your star power and just want to hire you the ones that like heard of you yesterday or, or somebody mentioned your name and referred you, but they don't know anything about you. And, and, you know, those are the ones that three, six months down the road are going to enroll, but you can enroll that person on the first phone call. If you know how to do this the right way and you don't have to spend a ton of time doing follow-ups. And then once you optimize your sales and you've got a process that works, the best part is if you're an expert and you just drone on for an hour and that works for you because of your star power um, and because you are so knowledgeable, when you go to bring somebody on to get yourself out of sales, there's no way to duplicate that at all. And if you're a fan of like Michael Gerber and Emith and that whole thing, like you've got to have a system. And so we build that foundation so that you then can build the system to actually scale your business. And our, our new podcast that we're going to be doing, me and, and Tony Banta, who's another network member, is called Scaling Transformation. Because what we see is this multi-billion dollar uh, coaching economy that's going to be a hundred billion dollar uh, economy in over the next 20 years. And I see it as we are all at the foundation of the transformation economy. And you, without knowing how to sell transformation in an authentic way, you can't be a part of it. Foundation of the transformation economy. 
I can't think of anybody in this particular group that doesn't want to be part of that when you articulate it that way. Right. Cause that's what we're all doing. We're trying, like I, I, I've met and I've talked to a lot of you guys in the network and every one of you that I've come across. And that's why you're here because Nick wouldn't have you in this group. If you weren't the kind of person that's like trying to make a positive difference in people's lives or businesses, that's what we're all doing. We're all part of that transformation economy. Uh, we're, we want to make the world a better place and yeah, we want to make a lot of money doing it because we also want to take that money and build foundations and do good things in the world. And so there's two ways to do that. One is to build a business that does transform lives. And then two is to, because you've done that, you make it, you know, you make a lot of money and then you can build foundations and other and give and charitable things that allow you to do it in an even bigger way. And I know most of you in this group, that's what you really want, but you've got to be able to scale that transformation. And if yeah. you're, yeah. if you're only able to do that by in one-on-one -on -one or, or in a small group setting, because your systems aren't in place, well then there's people in this group, you know, like Dan G with the system, like Tony Banta with client success, that can help you actually get things set up so that you can scale transformation. And that's how we change the world. That's how we take our power back from these big mega corporations that are doing, you know, no good in the world at all. Yep. And that that's, there's a few hangups. And that is for, from my perspective, so I work with people, a lot of the people we're working with are like, they're reaching that maybe 2 million a year mark which is really where like, I cannot keep selling my own stuff. There is yeah. no, and they pull out a little bit and then their, their close rate just plummets and they have to plug themselves back in. So they're just in a cycle of like, they're, they're just stuck, right? The other people that like Pete Bradley, right? Bradley will work with the other person that is not a 2 million a year. They have the ability, they have the gift, they have the service, but they feel dirty selling stuff kind of like you said right yeah and th those are the two biggest hang-ups i see so i i kind of want you to break down even, even from from wherever you're comfortable for, for there's that point where like hey it's my first sale i don't like sales the the, the transaction the grant cardone thing um i do know people too if you want to touch on this i know people that sell really really well they're super tactical and pushy yeah but they're refund and their chargeback rates end up bearing the business and causing stress, right? So I'm, I'm just gonna give you the floor. We got, we got about 13, 14 people in here. And it, it, you know, a lot of people catch this replay, getting a lot of hearts. People love Peter. If you don't know Peter, people love him. So you're getting a lot of hearts right now. Um, just walk through that foundation and you, you got the floor man and everybody in here, every, every time I hear Peter talk, I swear, I get better at sales and I, I become a better teacher and all that stuff. So just, just I'm going to give you the floor and let you kind of walk through how, what are, how are you laying this foundation? What are the, what are the little shifts people can make that'll get them over some of these, some of these friction points in one selling yeah. their own stuff and two scaling the transformation. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the very first thing is um, yeah. I mean, like if you're, if you're, if you've got like a super pushy sales process, you might have a really high closing rate, but then your refund rate is off, off, oftentimes high as well. Um, and I, look, I'm not a pushy salesperson. Um, in fact, it was actually, here's one of my hangups for a long time. I, I was a broke coach for a long time because I, I really didn't want, uh, I didn't want to sell sales coaching and sales training for a long time because I didn't want to be like, teaching people to be pushy, even though it wasn't what I did, it just didn't like, it didn't align with me for some reason. And then I really got into the personal development space and I, and I, you know, got into this world of online marketing with all these, these coaches that are doing amazing things in the world. I'm like, well, I can help those people, you know, sell that. I believe in those products. And I've always, I've always been really, really good at selling something that I absolutely believe in. Um, but I can't just go take a job with somebody just for a job to do sales if I, you know, even if I think it's an okay product, but when I believe in something like my passion just comes through. And so I, I resisted doing sales coaching and sales training for a long time. And now like, I'm in a total, like this, you know, it's funny how things sort of evolve. I, I would have you know never expected that I would have a highly successful business, you know, coaching and training salespeople and, and coaches and, and uh, you know, transformation experts it would have just never even occurred to me that this is where I would be now. But I sort of fell into it backwards 
by you know sort of help helping people on the side with their sales and then realizing how you know how powerful that was and at first it was about making a living but then when i got into this niche of transformation and it was like holy cow like you know when i help somebody like you know one of my clients who's who's helping people uh you know build a coaching business that's helping people and there's this exponential like impact that we're having or you know i'm helping somebody that's got a program that helps women um you know like find their their path in the world and feel that fulfillment and create the life they want and be a better uh, you know a better mother a better wife a better a better business owner um you know and i i see that and i'm like holy cow you know so now like i, I it's so in alignment with the impact I want to have in the world. And so for each of you that you've got your program, if you're in this group, I know you believe in it. I know, you know, it's the, one of the best things in the world, if not the best thing in the world. I know you believe that if people enroll with you, they're going to get a transformation. And if they don't, they're worse off. If they don't, you know, if they don't enroll with you, they're worse off because they're not going to find somebody else who can walk them down that path. And one of the hardest things sometimes is we don't want to have that harder conversation at the end of the call when somebody's fear comes up and they're afraid to move forward. And so, you know, we kind of do the thing. A lot of us, you know, uh, this isn't something I do, but I see a lot of you do it is you go, yeah, no problem. You know, you, you know, think about that. We'll talk in a couple of weeks. And then a few weeks later, they hire the lesser expensive offer or the same price or more expensive offer with somebody else who like railroaded and pushed them into the sale and got that, got that enrollment. And so, you know, you're sort of left going, man, I really wanted to help that person. And I know in six months they've spent that money and they're still going to have to come back and still need me. So I know I'll get that business eventually, but because you weren't a leader on the call, because you weren't able to have a, an authentic coaching conversation at the end of the call that allowed them to enroll beyond their fear, they end up going with somebody who can do that, even if that transformation or that offer isn't as good. So here's, I'm going to use my language and then I want you to use yours and I want to adopt it after that. Okay. okay. There's people watching here that have lost sales. I'm not going to name names because there's one in particular. I'm really mean to him all the time because he, I'm pretty sure people are ready to pay and, you know, being such a good dude, he's like, ah, just think about it. Um, and I get on him and say, Hey, you need to maintain leadership throughout the end of the call. Right. And that's what I'm talking about. So I'm pointing that out to the people I've said that to, but is, is that what, what language would you use? Cause I want to adopt your language. Yeah. I mean, leadership is absolutely it, right? It's, it's absolutely maintaining leadership, but it's, it's doing it from a place of, of realizing that, look, if they paid you a thousand dollars, right. To jump on a call with you and then, you know, they want to be coached and then they tell you exactly what they want, exactly what they need to do to get, get it. And then they get to the end of the call and they're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to think about whether or not I'm going to do that. Like, I don't know if I'm ready to go all in. I'm a little afraid. And they've paid you $1,000 for that hour of coaching. You are not going to let that stand because they paid you for that, that, you know, that coaching. And so you're going to, you're going to get real with them and you're going to go, wait, you just told me for the last hour, this is the most important thing to you in the world, that this outcome would be priceless to you, that it would change your family. It would change your health. It would change your finances. It would change your community. And now you're at the precipice, you're standing on the cliff, it's time to jump and you're going, ah, let me think about it for a bit. Yep. Like that's not like, you know, you're not going to let that stand. You're going to coach them through that. That's all we're doing at the end of a call when we're handling objections the right way is we're authentically coaching them through their fear. And guess what? If you don't do that, the only reason you're not doing it is because they didn't pay you for that call. Think about that for a second. And so that's what's really happening is because they didn't pay you, you're not standing in your power strong for them and empowering them to move past their fears. That's the real difference. If they paid you, you do it. So if that's the reason you're not staying strong at the end of the call, when you put it that way, now you go, oh, wow, I have to do that. It is my duty to do that because they signed up for a strategy session with me. I told them I was going to give them my all and, and, and I need to. Now, that means you've got to shift your belief about the strategy session. It's not a sales call. It's a conversation about their hopes, their dreams, their pain, their doubts about their ability to, to fix it and what it's costing them to actually move past that. And if the cost of not taking action, which it almost always is in these transformational offers, is less than the cost of your program, they'd be crazy not to take it. So you got to coach them through that. 
So um, it, 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 it's really about, so it's really about leadership. Leadership's exactly the right way to, to put it. And that's the foundation. So, I mean, that's what everybody's got to get first. So I don't know if, if you know, there's comments, if anybody's, if, I want to know if does that resonate with everybody right now? Does that make sense to everybody? Waiting for them to roll in. I got transformation economy, but Renee is on, on fire. Byproduct hey, change the world. Matt says, that's my whole issue. I'm too dang nice. And Renee says, we love Peter. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And so it, it's really, and I love you guys too. I got to tell you, like, this is my favorite thing in the world to do. Um, you know, I, I, like the fact that I get to sit here from Bali and, and talk to all you guys about how to make the world a better place and how to do it in an authentic way and how to make more money doing it so that you have that money to have even bigger impact in your communities, in your children's lives in you know, in whatever, like, like we are the luckiest people in the world. We really are all of us to be sitting here in this on the brink of, of what's going to happen over the next 20 years. And it's going to be scary because there's a lot of people out there that are going to lose their jobs and they're going to get laid off and they're not going to know what to do. But all of us are the ones they're going to turn to. And it's going to be our programs and our services and our systems that's going to help them get through that. And then they're going to create their value in the world. And, and all of a sudden, this transformation economy, which is being born right before our eyes, is, is something we get to be a part of. So that's the frame with which I approach every single call. I get to help make this person's life better or business better in some way by having an authentic conversation. And some of you guys have heard me say, people don't communicate. I know all of you are pretty self-aware people and you do listen and you do coach and you have that skill. But if you, you know, I go to, I used to go to a lot of networking events and I would, I'd be in the room with these people and it's like people handing out business cards. And then you'd see these two people having a conversation and they're talking back and forth and neither one of them is communicating. And I'm like watching and it's like, he said this, this person just then goes off on his tangent and they go back and forth and neither one of them is really talking to each other. They're talking at each other because they're not listening. They're just waiting for their turn to talk. And when somebody gets on a strategy session with you and, and I'm, I'm like slowing my energy down for a second and I'm getting to that, that place of presence and they absolutely listen to what you have to say, right? You're the coach and you're, you're absolutely listening to what they have to say. They feel heard and they're able to kind of dig in and uncover what's really going on for them and what's really been holding them back. And when you, and then there's, you know, and, and this is kind of the pieces that I want to talk about. You guys have all heard me talk about for the most part in other places, but for some of you that haven't, you need these three things that you want to uncover with them. The pain that they're in, right? This is the general problem that they're experiencing. Oh, they're procrastinating and they're not losing weight. They're, um, you know, they, they, they don't know how to market. They don't know how to get leads. They don't know how to get business. They don't know how to sell, you know, whatever it is, right? You're uncovering that general problem. And then you want to get to the specifics of how that's showing up. How is that showing up in their family? How is that showing up in their, you know, the relationships? How is that showing up in their health, in their bank account, in their community, like in all the ways that it's showing up in their life. So the general is like, what's the general problem? And then how is that affecting them? You know, and we want to remember questions. I'm going to give you a little bit of sales training. You want to remember questions like, tell me more about that. Why do you think that is? How does that feel? And, and so that gets you more of the specifics and more of the details. And then we want to explore their doubts. So we know that, you know, um, we've got a proven system that's going to help people know if a, a call was closable or not. And so one of the things we may ask on a sales call is, you know, is hey, do you have a, a, a system for determining whether or not a prospect that you spoke to was actually closable and whether it was you that missed the sale? or whether it was that that was never even really an enrollable lead anyway. You know, do you have a process for that? And of course the answer is no, or they wouldn't be on the call with me. So, but I, but I, wanna, I wanna confirm that. Cause hey, if they do, and they've got all the things that they need, I'm happy to just give them a couple of pointers and say, hey, you don't need me at all, go do this. Like, I'm not gonna take their money if they don't, you know, they don't need me, but chances are they do. And they've got those doubts. So you wanna have doubt questions related to your offer, the things that you solve. Do you have a, a plan for how to deal with procrastination? Do you have a plan for uh, how to make sure that when you fall off track in your eating plan, that you get back on track and you don't lose three days and gain five pounds that you just lost last week? You know, right? Like that might be for, for a weight loss or health offer. So you want to have those doubt questions because you got to help them realize that they, they have doubts about their ability to solve this on their own. 
And then you, and then the third piece is cost. What's it actually costing them? What's it costing their family, right? Like when it comes to like a weight loss offer, what's it, what's it like? And I know I'm, I'm actually down 35 pounds. Um, I'm in the process. I just bought a, a $10,000 program to, you know, to focus on my, my health. And so I know, in fact, and that I trained to the person who sold me on the offer and she handled my objections. Like, like she got so clear. In fact, it's actually part of what changed my entire life. Had me break up with my girlfriend of four years and moved to Bali was I realized that I was not putting me first. That happened in the sales call, not in the program because the sales call can be transformational. So, um, so then it's, what's it costing you to not, uh, take action, to not fix this? You know, uh, how's that, that affecting your family? Not being, you know, feeling like you're not going to be there for your daughter's wedding, not being able to, to keep up with your, your grandkids. Um, you know, what's it costing you to work 80 hours a week? Because that's what it takes to you to get enough leads for you to fund your business so that you can feed your family, you know, but Hey, you can, you can bring on somebody like, you know, like Joel and, and build your power offer. And now all of a sudden you can spend less time generating leads and more time actually making money and working with your family and impacting your clients. So what's it costing you to not take action? So if you've got those three things um, and, and you've got clarity that, oh my God, I can solve this pain. Oh my God, I can absolutely, you know, help them with their doubts and, and show them a plan to fix those things. And I, and I know that, that the cost for them is way less for my program than it is to stay where they're at. Well, then you just qualify whether or not they're going to be a good client are they coachable? Are they resourceful? Are they gonna, you know, they're gonna take action. All those things. Um, they're specific to your clients uh, and what you want in a client. And then it's you know, connecting the dots. Okay, great. So here's what these four pillars that I've got that we're gonna work on together. This one's gonna solve that. This is gonna get you so that you're not having to work every night till nine o'clock and you miss out on um, on on your kid's softball game, right? And you want to use their words. So you connect the dots for them of how this is going to solve those problems because their real problem isn't that they don't have enough leads. Their real problem is that their, their wife is, you know, losing confidence in, in their ability to lead as a, you know, in the marriage because they, they can't even, you know, make enough income to feed the family or their, their real problem is that they don't have the energy to keep up with their grandkids and, you know, and their grandkids are, are, um, they're missing out on their lives or missing out on their softball games or whatever. So, that's the real problem, even though the general problem might be they don't have enough leads. So then you connect the dots on all that, you confidently make the offer, and then you've got to be able to then coach them through any fears that they've got to get them to move forward. So that's the sales process. That's what I want all of you guys to be doing. I've actually got a document uh, that I'm going to share with all of you guys. It'll be in the vault uh, for those of you guys that are, that are members of the vault um, and the network. We'll get that will actually take you through. It's a guide to know was this call actually closable or not? So how many of you guys would like to know that to be able to get off a call? And you know, it's like, you have that feeling, you know, like, oh man, yeah, like, was that closable? Is there something I could have done? You know, and then it like eats you alive, right? Like you, you think about it when you're at dinner with your spouse, you think about it, you know, uh, you start handling objections on your dog, you know, uh, every telemarketer that calls you try, start trying to uncover their pain. You know, I mean, the Girl Scouts of America won't even knock on your door anymore because, you know, you're handling their objections when they, when they knock on the door. So. If, you, if you're thinking about calls like that all the time and how you could do better, this guide will help you be able to determine whether or not a call was closable. So I'll make sure you guys all get a, get a copy of that. Yeah, that, that to me, if, you've, if you haven't lost sleep over like, man, that, I know I should have closed that. You know, uh, they were so fired up and I, I, I have no idea. At this point, I'm like, ah, maybe they would have closed, maybe they wouldn't. So I could tell you that I don't have a system that tells me if somebody's closable or not. And I could tell you how much bandwidth, like how many times I've blown my cognitive load on not knowing, right? Stressing about it. Um, and the other thing I want to point out that you said that I think is useful real quick is a lot of people, these transformational offers, they just get stuck. Say, oh, well, it's harder to sell because there's no financial return, right? And the thing that stood out to me was, Everybody's so obsessed with the, the ROI, but I think the COI is more important. The cost of inaction is more important. And you highlighted that so well. So anybody, if you go back and watch this, listen to that part about, it's about spending weekends with your kids or, you know, like it's, it's not always the financial return. And I just want to highlight that because so many people are so hung up on like, well, it's easy to sell a business offer because you're just offering them more money. And, but I have a, all my offer does is save your marriage. Who's going to pay for that? Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I, anybody? I, yeah. Like, right. Like, I mean, what's worth, worth more making $10,000 a month or saving your marriage with the love of your life where you've lost that connection? You know, what's worth more, um, you know, bu building a, a successful business or knowing you're not going to have a heart attack at, at, you know, 40 years old. Right. Like, I'll tell you which, which one I'm going for. I'd rather spend my money on things that are going to make me better. The business will come, right? The, the money will come, especially if you're working on yourself. So like these non-money offers make people money, whether you realize or not, when you make people a better person, you do make them more money. You do make them more fulfilled. You do give them the gift of life, the gift of health, the gift of relationships. And, and that's, I mean, I don't know about you, but I think everybody in this group would agree. That's way more important than the dollars in your bank account. Right. That's the point of having the dollars in the bit, right? Isn't the point of making the money is to quality of life? Right. It's money's just energy. I mean, the only reason, I mean, and so I get a hell of a lot more energy from, you know, all these other things that we're talking about um, than from the money. And when you've got things in alignment in the rest of your life, the money just comes. We've all seen that, you know? So, so, so yeah, but, but that's the key is when you're on these offers, you can handle those objections. You do have, a, have leverage to help them move forward. You know, it's like, and I, and when I say leverage, I want to be, I want to be careful because I don't want to, I don't want it to sound like we're using leverage to make somebody do something they don't want to do. I'm talking about leverage from the perspective of, we've all seen, most of us probably seen Tony Robbins talk on leverage. And he, he talks a little bit about how, if you want to quit smoking, you go to the, the cancer ward and you see people with emphysema and lung cancer and you talk to them and you get really clear on what it looks like for you to stay on this path and you get leverage within yourself to like make a change. That's a great way to get yourself to shift is to reckon, to pull that kind of leverage. Well, that's what you're doing uh, partially on this call is you're getting the leverage uh, with the person to recognize, okay, I, I need to do something about this now because this is just too painful. And what they've been doing is they've been ignoring it. They've been stuffing it down and it's that little, that little twinge of a uh, tinge of, of doubt and fear and anxiety that they feel constantly all the time because they know they're not handling something in their life that's super important because you know they're just they're just not focused on it, they're just ignoring it and now all of a sudden they get on a call with you because that tinge is strong enough that they know they got to do something about it but then they jump on the call and now it's like oh i could just ignore this for another six years i'll just wait till this this you know this fear and this anxiety inside of me turns into cancer and then I'll deal with it. Right. And, and it is cancer in their, in their body because they're not dealing with things in their life. They know they should. And when you help them uncover that and you give them clarity, that's leadership. That's how we create transformation. And here's the best part. Not only will your refund rate go down when you do this right, but uh, the, the, uh, you know, the ability of your clients to succeed will be better too, because when you set the stage right on the sales call, then they enter the program in the right frame of mind to succeed, right? If you're needy on the sales call and you're like, oh yeah, no, you know, like, like my favorite question is, well, how much work is this going to take? And, you know, I don't do what most people do. Well, you could probably do it in two to three hours a week, you know, like it, it's really set up so that you can, you know, you can manage it. Like, I know that's everybody's inclination is to just soften it. And my inclination is the opposite. I'm like, well, how important is this to you? Is there anything more important to you than, than solving this? Because if there is, then maybe you shouldn't do this. Right. It's like, no, 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 I'm not saying that. I just want to know so I can plan for, it. okay, great. It. Well, put aside, you know, three to five hours a week, but I want you to be prepared to, to put into it, whatever it's going to take, because that's, what's going to give you the result. And when you have that kind of conversation with somebody, they come into the program and the first time they start whining about it's hard, you remind them about the sales call and you go, Hey, we talked about this. I told you it was going to be hard. Right. Anything worth doing is going to be hard. Yeah. So I think, I've talked to a few people that actually want to quit. They're, they're good salespeople and they want to quit because they come into a program, right? And they sell, it, it, essentially, I explain it this way. Like if I go to the grocery store and I buy a box of apples and I go home and I open it and it's oranges, I'm going to be pissed. It's, it doesn't matter if I like oranges or not. That's not the point, right? So yeah. if I buy an easy solution, and then I go into the program and it's a lot of hard work. I'm going to be pissed. So there's still some incongruence. I know a lot of salespeople that, um, that want to get out of sales for that reason is that they are not handling that up front. They're not saying, yes, it's going to be hard work. So they're getting people rolling in and then coming back pissed off at the salesperson for lying to them about the, the amount of work it's going to take. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because that's, you know, when we first started doing what we're doing, we were taking on clients and, and our messaging was, 
you know, we'll get you out of sales so you don't have to do it. And we kept getting attracting these clients who were like, oh yeah, I want to get out of sales. I hate it. I'm not any good at it. You know, this, that, and the other thing. So we just focused on building their teams. And what we found was that, you know, first of all, you can't lead what you won't do, right? So you can't lead a sales team if you can't do it and you won't do it. And so, um, you know, I know for some of you out there, I mean, look, if you're a $20 million, $30 million a year, major, corp, you know, big corporation um, or hundred million dollar a year, big corporation, you know, you can build sales teams um, and you can sort of afford, you've got thick enough margins that you can afford to just like blow up your sales team until you have like that savant who can come in and just close anything. Like I could get on any offer and I could close it. Like I don't, you know, I, I just can't, that's just a, a, an ability I have it. There's a small amount of people in the world that can actually do that. So, you know, you can't, you don't have the profit margins to, to build that kind of a sales force. The only way that you're going to be successful is to create an authentic sales process that works for you. And then once you've created that process, you can, we can help you lead other people to build that team. And then you can step away having done it, having shown how to do it, having created the process authentically because you know your client. And that's a way to keep your profit margins, uh, you know, good because you can actually build the team without, you know, blowing yourself up and, and destroying your business. Because I'll tell you right now, if you had to go through 50 salespeople to get that one savant who can do it, how many leads are, if each one of them blows five good leads, uh, you know, you're out of business. It's over. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's what we learned of last few years. And that's why so many of, of these coaches and, and transformation experts, that's why they blow up their businesses because they want to build a sales team. And then one of two things happen. Either they like almost go out of business, spending all their money trying to do it, or they give up and then they just go back to being okay with a small income. You know, and when I say small, I'm talking, you know, they could do 20 or $30,000 a month. They're never going to grow beyond that because they, they, number one, they haven't fixed their own sales process. So they're leaving money on the table with their sales. And number two, they can't scale their sales process uh, because they just don't know how to do it. And so they never, ever grow. And if you're trying to create a, you know, a transformation economy and scale transformation and have this major impact on the world, like I know all of you are, you want to do it, but you also want to have quality of life. So you, you got to build the systems and you got to do it right in order to, to create that and make it happen. Yeah. Awesome. So one more, give, give me the three, the three steps and three pillars again. Uh, okay. So the, the, the three steps are when it comes, and this is just for the sales process itself, yeah. pain, got to get the pain general and specific, mm -hmm. you know, and remember the questions, tell me what you know, tell me why that is, or, or excuse me, tell me more about that. Why do you think that is? And how does it feel it, with, with a, with some general questions of like, oh, okay, so what's, what's not working specifically in your business right now that got you on this call, they're going to open up, right? That's an open ended question. They're going to give you a bunch of stuff. Then you want to dig into the specifics, how that's showing up, the general problems, um, and then what it feels like um, and why they think that's, that's occurring. And then of course, tell me more about that is just to get them to open up even more. Then, so pain, then secondarily is the doubt. And the third thing is the cost. What's the, the cost of an action? And so if you've got those three things, everything, and then it's just qualifying they're a good client, connecting the dots for them and handling any of their objections. And I know a lot of you guys want like me to like give you the one liners that are going to like smash objections. And we can, we can do that. Now I'm going to in the vault for, you know, for those of you guys who aren't a member of the vault, you should just get in there. Cause like, there's some really cool shit happening in there like every day. And there's some amazing people that we're all connected to, um, but get in the vault and, and I'm going to be doing some Facebook lives and we're going to talk about some of this stuff so we can smash objections. But the truth is stop worrying about objections right now, focus on the uncover. And then when it comes to objections, just for now, just be willing to bring up all the stuff that they told you at the beginning and coach them through whether or not they really want that. Because if they do, then it's time to take action. It's time to jump off the cliff, draw the line in the sand. So, so those are the three, the three pillars for, for the sales process. And then there's a couple other things that I think are really key um, you know, that you really want to, you know, that you really want to think about when it comes to like, whether or not you're even ready to, uh, to build a, a sales team. Um, so, and I'm gonna give you those three things too. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cash flow. That's number one. And in order to have, you know, in order to have uh, a team, you got to have cash flow. You got to have a sales process that works and you got to have systems. And I'm going to talk about each one of them real quick and, and what they are and why they matter. So cash flow, you got to have like either one of two things, a war chest of some sort that's going to get you through what I call the desert, 
right? Because the desert is, you know, you've got to that place, you're making 20, 30,000 a month. You know, you want to scale transformation in a big way. You don't want to have a huge impact on the world, but like, that's it. That's as far as you could get. And you're beating your head up against the wall and you're trying to like get to that next level, but you're stuck. Um, the, you've, you've got to have a war chest to get through the desert because when it comes to, as I talked about just a minute ago, when it comes to scaling a sales team, it's going to cost you some time and some money. Now, there's an alternative to a war chest. You still want to have some foundation, you know, especially, you know, if you've come through most of us, you know, we might've been making 60, 80, hundred grand a year. And then we created this offer. And now all of a sudden, a lot of you guys are doing two, three, 400,000 a year. Well, still live like you're making six figures, you know, like you're making 50, 60, 80 and, uh, and then be putting money aside. You know, that's how you create your war chest. But it, like I, like I said, only the major corporations can build a war chest big enough to build the kind of sales team it's going to take to scale transformation at the level that we're talking about. And we're talking like building a seven figure business and beyond. So the other piece of that is in addition to, a, you know, you can have a much smaller war chest if you drive sales, which means optimizing your sales process. And while you build the team, you, you're not doing it to get off the phones right now. Right now, you're driving the sales process. And that does two things. One, it gives you the money to be able to afford to build the team. And two, it also helps to create the belief in the salespeople you're working with because you can give them calls of you following the methodology that they need to sell. And that's why the second thing then is a sales process. And most of you don't have a sales process. I'm going to be honest. How many of you guys are like, oh, I'm great at sales and I'm closing 30%. And then I listen to your calls and I'm like, well, you're closing 30% because your belief is super high and you're super knowledgeable. And that's great, but you're leaving money on the table with your own sales and you can never build a team with that sales process because no salesperson will ever be able to duplicate what you do on the phone. So you've got to have a sales process that actually works for a team. And that's what I just outlined for you with pain, doubt, and cost. Um, so, you know, so, and that, you know, you need to be able to, a script that a salesperson can use to sell. And when I say script, I mean a structure, a framework, um, of, you know, like the kinds of questions that will open them up, you know, a way to kind of pitch the process of what you do. Um, you need a real, you know, structured way, but they, they need, you also need to train them how to think so that they can use the script as a guide. And it's not a verbatim, you know, hi, my name is Peter. How are you today? Right? Like that's not what the kind of script we're talking yeah. about. Um, then you need uh, character sheets, right? We all talk about avatars. But below the avatar is the character sheet. Within those, each of those avatars that you serve, there are characters, right? There's the guy that, um, you know, that uh, wants to, to lose weight and, you know, makes a lot of money and he's an entrepreneur and wants to be a high performer, right? But then within that, um, there's the, the character of like, you know, they show up and they're really struggling with X, Y, or Z. And so there's the, the deeper below the avatar, there's characters within each of those. Those are the kinds of people that you see that show up on the call all the time. And because you've been involved in your own sales process, you've started to define who those are. So, so and we help our clients kind of define those characters. Um, and that defines more than just the avatar. And that helps a salesperson understand, oh, when I get someone like this on the phone, this is our normal avatar, but there's some characteristics here that are specific. So these are the kinds of questions that are going to lead me to what's going on for them. They're going to open that up. And so you can help. So when we work with our clients, we help them create those character sheets. And then we teach them how to actually role play with their salespeople using those character outlines so that they, that salesperson can be super prepared when they get on the phone, which is going to reduce the amount of waste that you have as they're learning. So we, we really mitigate that quite a bit. Um, You've got to have questions that dig into the pain for each character within the avatar. You've got to have a process on how you solve those specific problems. That's your pitch, right? Your connect the dots. Um, and then you need to have an objections document that outlines the questions that you would ask to help coach the person through their fear. So those are the things that you need for the sales process. You got cash flow, you got sales process. And then the final thing you need is systems. And I know all of you are like, oh yeah, we know we need systems. You know, it's probably part of the reason you're here or maybe you're working with Dan G. Um, the key with systems is there's two reasons why you need that. First of all, you need it because it's, you know, those systems are, are you know, important for you to be able to actually track what your salespeople are doing. Like how many times somebody's come to us, oh yeah, I've got a salesperson, you know, and I think they're doing pretty good. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like how many calls did they take last month? Uh, well, I don't really know. Well, how many did they close? I think they closed three. It's like, okay, so you, you don't actually know if they did any good. You, it, you just, it just feels good because they made three sales last month. 
and you didn't have to do that. You know, and then we dig into it and all of a sudden they're like, oh, wow, you know, we made three sales at, at $3,000 and we made nine grand, but we took it, to, you know, a hundred calls and our apps cost us, you know, $250 a piece. So all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I didn't actually make any money at all. In fact, I lost money, right? And people don't even know it because they're still doing, you know, maybe they're still doing sales. And so they're still, the revenue is still there, but they actually lost money on the salesperson. So you got to have the systems in place to track, but there's a, a much deeper reason why you have to have systems. One of the biggest, and I'm just curious, like if anybody has any inclination on what that might be, like why do you, why are, is a system so important before you hire a salesperson? If anybody has any thoughts, and I'd be curious what people think. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see if the comments are. Let me see if the comments are updating. We have Tony Banta in here. He's he probably knows, well, he the, knows answer. the answer. Yeah, <laughs> I know Tony will know. So I'll, I'll give it to you guys. I just wanna I just want to uh, make sure you guys are engaged. So and I know I can talk a million miles a minute and uh, and I can go off. So I, I I like to slow it down for a sec. Whoa. So the, the, the final piece of this, when it comes to why you need this, the right systems is you will blow up your sales people's mindset. If your systems aren't on place when you hire them. Yep. And what I mean, what I mean by that is if they come in and like, you know, you forget to tell them how to take a payment or that, you know, Oh, you're supposed to, you know, this is how you handle a deposit or, you know, like, um, you know, you have problems getting their calendar set up. If it's not smooth, Every little mistake that you make creates a, a, a cloud of disbelief in their mind. Because if you aren't handling their onboarding correctly, how are you going to handle the people that they get on the phone and that they give it their all and they sell a seven or $10,000 program to? How are you going to onboard them? And so they start to wonder, is this a legitimate business or is this a fly by that thing that I'm selling for? And you kill their belief. And I don't care if you have the best sales training in the world. If you don't create a culture of belief with your sales team, they will not sell, even if they do it perfect, even if they follow tactically everything right. So those are the three things that you've got to have to be able to build a sales team cash flow, a sales process that works, and the systems in place to manage your team and to build their belief. And if you've got those things, then you can scale transformation and you can have the kind of impact on the world that we all want to have. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I see the comments rolling in now saying this is awesome. Justin Demer says he just joined the network, says this is awesome. Uh, Justin Peters in the network, ping him if you need anything. Um, he's a giving guy. Uh, so let's hit uh, – Real quick, because we're going to run out of time. And what we do here is we go dark on Facebook Live and we just let Vault and Network members ask a question or two. Um, and then we're going to, tomorrow, tomorrow I'll put the handout that, so so this handout you have, this this form, right? They fill it out and it tells them, yes, this was a closable sale, which means you got something to fix or no, they were never going to close anyway. Yeah. So what it is, it's, it's, uh, it's not always that they fill out, they just go through it and they ask themselves some questions. Okay. And basically they look at it and they go, do I have this? Do I have this? Do I have this? If they, if they know they've got all of those things and they did all those things right, then they can go, okay, say, then that wasn't a closable sale. Cause I, I did all these steps. So just reading this document will absolutely improve your sales process. And then, you know, obviously if, if you're feeling like, Hey, I feel like I'm leaving money on the table. I mean, here's the cool thing about what I love about what we get to do every client that we work with, like you're going to make two or three more sales, like out the gate within the first 30 days of working with us. So the ROI with working with our team, yep. you know, is huge. And then the cool thing is you also get with, with working with us, the actual ability to then uh, build a team. You get the process for that. Maybe you're not ready, but you'll have it for when you're ready. Um, but what I tried to create is like, guys, I mean, if you're close and you just need to do a few things, this document will help you. This is going to answer a lot of your questions. And I want this to, to help you guys so that, hey, if you can do it just with that, and you don't need us, awesome. But I would love for, you know, any of you guys think, who think you're leaving a couple of sales on the table every month, you know, I'd love to chat with you guys in the network with some Facebook Lives and certainly those of you who guys need it, you know, to work with us directly. Yeah, so let's give them um, just as direct access as possible. What is the name of your Facebook group? I, don't, I think it might, is, I don't know if it's public yet or live. Um, you know, that's, Tony Banta and I are actually starting uh, a new podcast um, and a Facebook group that's going to go along with that. 
And uh, Tony, type the name in the in the chat because I don't even know the name of the group. I Perfect. just we just literally set it up yesterday. Well, what you can do is you can just give me a link to it whenever it's set up, and I'll put it with this training in the vault. Okay, and awesome. Everybody, yeah, everybody that watches this replay knows how to go straight to the source and harass you guys there. Yeah, and guys, we're going to be doing a ton of, of, of content in there because there's really, you know, the two big pieces that you need to scale transformation are client success, like the ability to get clients results as you scale, because as you scale and all of a sudden it's not you like being involved with every single client every single day in order to grow your business. Uh, you've got to have, you've got to continue to get client results. There's nobody better in the business than Tony Banta at actually helping you get those client results. And so most people need one of two things. Either they need the, the ability to improve their client results. Uh, and, and in that case, you know, somebody like Tony can absolutely help them. And some of them, they're like, well, my client results are great right now. I want to scale and make more income. And then as we scale, then I'm going to need to go and work on client results. So usually they need one or, or the other of us. Yeah. So we're, we're creating a podcast to actually help people with that because, and, and there's going to be a ton of value in content. This is not going to be just for us to try to get, uh, get sales. Obviously that'll be a, a de facto thing that will happen. Um, but our primary goal is to help all of you guys through our group, through the network group and through our podcast, actually scale transformation and have an impact on the world. Yep. So we're going to, we're going to go dark and give, vault network members about 10 minutes we only got one person on zoom right now if you guys want to pop on the link is in the vault if you're not in the vault you don't get a little private time with peter but uh this is my favorite kind of offer because if you have leads and you have a good product and sales is your bottleneck you hire peter and he's pretty much just selling you discounted money that's the best kind of offer to buy right you, uh, you hire peter you make three extra sales in a short amount of time, he's paid for himself twice. And the rest is, it's just money in the bank. It's house money, right? So um, if you feel like that's where you're at, I would implore you to reach out because I, I don't know anybody better. And again, if you don't have the marketing piece, don't hire Peter. It's going to piss everybody off because, you know, if you don't have a fulfillment piece, then I don't know why you're selling stuff. Uh, <clears throat> but if sales is the bottleneck, no brainer. I'm telling you right now, you know that, I, I guard my referrals. I try not to lead you guys astray. Um, Tony Banta says, we're growing the transformation economy as big as it will go. Who's in? If you're in, drop a comment, let Tony know. But we're going to go dark and we're going to talk to Tobin because he's the only person on here. And I'm going to give him an opportunity to pick Peter's brain for a couple of minutes. So uh, guys, this replay will be in the vault tomorrow. I'll have that, that handout for you. And I'll make sure that you get the name of the group and the podcast and all that stuff. So we're going to go talk to Tobin.